By some estimates, up to a million Americans woke up this morning to find a drone under the tree for Christmas. 100,000 drones are expected to be sold. Their efforts to contain those flames were delayed by drones. Worries about both safety and security. Drones have been flying over, under, and even through the bridge. Plans to get in on the hot technology everybody's talking about. You have some limitations in Atlanta. We get a ton of questions at DroneWorks through social media and emails and from viewers and also even from clients and friends about how we fly legally or what it takes to fly legally. Um, and there's not really a simple answer, but uh, I'll put it this way, it takes a team of people at DroneWorks to do all of this. So dealing with like the local governments and dealing with law enforcement agencies in the United States and out other countries, it's uh, complicated and not always clear. Um, it's very time consuming, but we've gotten really good at it over the last few years. And now essentially we can fly, I won't go as far as to say anywhere, but we have pretty good odds of getting approval in most major countries. Uh, the less westernized ones, even more so. So a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of these local governments and private organizations and anybody, any of the stakeholders involved with, I don't know, something you'd want to film are really worried about terrorism. They're worried about privacy. They're worried about, you know, the basic liability exposure, which is a very real thing. You know, what happens if somebody gets hit or there's a crash or a fire, God knows what. So to combat that, what they've started doing in the last few years, this new like little cottage industry has cropped up. Uh, maybe in the last four or five years, companies have really started working on and that's anti-drone technology. So everything from anti-drone guns and cannons. They even have anti-drone like eagles apparently that they've been training in God knows where, but uh, a way to stop a drone from going where people don't want the drone to go. Many of you may have seen the incident a year or two ago with the guy who crashed his drone into the White House. Service officers combed the White House grounds after this drone crashed into a tree on the South Lawn at 3 a.m. There's a ton of these. People crashed at the U.S. Open. There have been incidents at sports stadiums all over the world. Um, so they're trying to figure out ways to prevent it with the idea that they're going to prevent a terrorist event. All of these, as far as I'm aware, have been hobbyists just out having fun. Only the worst thing I've seen in drone accidents is usually scraped up fingers or a, you know, a drone gets caught in somebody's hair. You see these huge compilation videos of drones you know, taking off and going into the middle of a party and crashing everybody. But I mean, it's usually just an embarrassment and somebody gets some scratches, a band-aid will take care of it in a few days of healing. With that said, you don't want to understate it. Drones can be dangerous in the wrong hands. A lot of people see the big drones that I fly. I'm primarily a piloted drone. We're we fly these big, you know, extremely expensive, extravagant, crazy drones and crazy cameras and lenses and sensors and whatever. But when I'm not at work as a hobbyist, I fly a small drone too. And shocker, it's a DJI Phantom. So this Christmas, I went on, uh, I never get to go on vacation. I travel a lot, but it's almost exclusively for work. So we're on a boat in the middle of nowhere in the Caribbean. Beautiful, nothing to run into. The laws out there are super flexible, so completely flying within the like guidelines of whatever international waters you're in at the time. Um, and while we were cruising through this, like into a port, there's a huge yacht. I'm talking about like, mega super ultra whatever the hell you want to call it yacht i mean this thing is massive turns out it's owned by a guy called roman abramovich who's one of the wealthiest guys in russia this happened to be at one time the largest private yacht in the world i think it's like 500 or 600 feet long or something i mean it's basically a cruise ship for one dude with more crew than there are actually passengers the guy who's driving our boat told us that there's 70 permanent crew members on this boat so 70 people just like cater to the Abramovich family and his buddies. So I see the big mega yacht. What's the first thing I do? Like a bunch of drone nerds is I grab my Phantom. I'm with my buddies. I take off and I fly and I shoot this thing. I never flew over the boat. I didn't get closer than maybe, I don't know, I'm making it up, but like 50, 75 feet or something. Um, epic footage, like beautiful. I mean, this boat is incredible. It's called Eclipse. This thing is a beast. I fly around the boat, all my buddies are with me, we're like hanging out like, whoa, look at this thing, you know, super geeking out. 
I lose control of the drone. The drone's gone. Like my screen blacks out. There's nothing there. It says, uh, I think it was like lost connection or no signal. And I'm like, I had no idea what happened. Literally never happened before. First thing I do, full throttle. As a drone pilot, if you lose signal, you just want to climb as fast as you can because that'll normally get you above whatever the obstacle is. So I full throttle punch out, don't see it. No clue what's going on. I mean, for minutes, like four or five minutes, I have no contact with the drone. All my friends are making fun of me. It's a ridiculous scene on, the, on our boat. Guy on the boat at the bow of the boat. Yo, that just happened. What? No. They're literally taking they control just took of it. it. They just took it. I turn the controller off. I turn the controller back on, and for like a split second, I see this flash of these guys. Like in the screen, I don't know what they were doing, but there was somebody by in the middle of the water. I'm like, what the hell? Turns out, I look out on the bow of Abramovich's mega yacht, Eclipse, and there's a guy with, I kid you not, I mean, I didn't know what it was at the time, but it basically, it was a cannon. It was some kind of like weapon pointing at it, and he had actually managed to take control of the drone. He wasn't able to like tell it where to go, but he was able to disconnect me, which caused the drone to attempt to land. They sent out two guys on a boat with another like thing to snatch the drone out of midair. They're so now I can see them. I mean, they're like, you know, a thousand feet out or something, but I can see like my little white speck drone and then these two Russians, Russian dudes on a speedboat chasing it around with this pole trying to get it. I didn't have signal on my controller, but the drone was moving when I gave it input. So I click it in sport mode, I full throttle the thing. All you see across the horizon is this like little flicker like going along and this speedboat with these Russian dudes chasing it full throttle. I mean, it was, it was insane. Literally, like, my heart was raised. It was the most bizarre thing I encountered. All the while, the guy on the bow, the front of the mega yacht, is pointing his little cannon at it. So what they were doing, this was one of these anti-drone devices that I had, like, heard about and, like, been told that people were experimenting with, but didn't ever realize that they were in use. Uh, again, this is, like, international waters from the middle of nowhere. This is not me, like, flying over the deck of the boat or catching somebody in a hot tub or whatever. I have no interest in, like, seeing people in the boat. It was just, like, Sick boat, let's shoot this thing. I got the drone back. They're the bad guys, <laughs> the Russians, are sitting at the edge of the boat staring at us. Uh, that was my experience with anti-drone technology. Right now, these things aren't available to like the consumer market. I think they'll be available to law enforcement agencies at some point. And don't get me wrong, there needs to be a way to stop crazy drone people from, you know, doing terrible things if that's what they intend to do. Uh, but it was pretty funny that some like civilian guy uh, on vacation on his mega yacht had this technology that I know for a fact in the United States that like sports stadiums don't have it. Most law enforcement agencies, all that I know of actually don't have it. I know this because they contact us asking us for advice on how to prevent unwanted drone characters from getting into their space. So stay safe out there. Drones are fun. I mean, like super creative tool that's really good to enjoy on vacation without a doubt. Drone work started actually because I like flying drones on vacation so much. I really support that. I think everybody should go out and have fun with drones. Uh, young, old, kids, experienced, not experienced, whatever. There's a way to approach it now that's easy. There's so many good consumer products on the market. The key is to fly responsibly, safely, all the things that everybody knows and you hear about all the time. Don't fly over and into things that you're not supposed to. I didn't, and in the case of a brown bitch, that's what I'm saying. If you ever see that boat, stay away from it because he will snatch your things. But if you have any questions about like flying drones or where you think maybe it may be legal or not legal or maybe ethical or not ethical or all that, just comment below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. And yeah, thanks. Later.